issues of life TV. Welcome, welcome to Issues of Life TV. My name is Bola. I am your host. Welcome to the exciting series, True Life Stories. Everyone has a story. This is where we get to interact with ordinary people and hear their extraordinary stories. Stories of tears to triumphs, struggles to successes, testimonies of Christ in their lives. It will surely bless you. Join me as I welcome today's special guest. Welcome, 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 welcome to Issues of Life TV. This is where we look at life from a godly perspective. My name is Bola. Thanks for joining in today. And we are starting a new series, True Life Stories. Everyone has a story. And this is where we get to hear real people, true people, share their stories. And it will help you to navigate the issues of life. So... I am so honored to have our first special guest. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, super excited. I'm sure you can see with my cheeks kind of almost <laughs> busting. <laughs> so, I have Pastor Mrs. Titilayo Akinshola here with us today. Welcome, Ma. Thank, Thank you, you ma. so much for Thank being you, part of True Life Stories. Thank Alleluia. you. We Thank really, you, really appreciate yes. you, Ma. So, Ma, we're just going to get into it. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for this opportunity. It's, um, it's one that I won't take for granted. Thank you, Ma. Um, thank you so much. And to your wonderful husband also. And to the wonderful uh, issues of life TV that... Um, that you have here, the Lord will move his work forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, my name is Titilayo Olayemi Akishola. I like to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Um, by the grace of God, I'm a maid servant of God. Um, and uh, recently, I, I normally call myself handmaiden. Hmm. But eventually, I now found out that there's another thing called made servant that people don't mm. normally use which is the same thing mm. so i changed it okay. and now i address myself as made servant you know people don't like to call themselves servants. <laughs> servants. Mm. so i'm a made servant of god and um a child of god a born again christian by the mercy of the lord i am married Please. i am blessed with four destiny fulfillers children Amen. hallelujah Amen. Uh, married to one husband and uh, by God's grace, I'm a, I'm a wife, uh, a mother, I'm a pastor by God's grace. God has called me to head a, an independent drama ministry that um, is an evangelical ministry called Jehovah Ezra Evangelical Ministry. And um, where God has uh, called us to uh, preach, act the full gospel, preach the full gospel by the mercy of God. So I think that's it. <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Ma. Thank Hallelujah. you. So tell us your salvation story. How yeah. did you come about being a Christian? How did Jesus meet with you or you meet with Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, salvation experience. Oh my goodness. Do you know that recently I discovered that I have given my life to Jesus several times. <laughs> wow. But one particular that I remember, I was, um, that was September 5, 1988. Mm. I remember that very well because September 5, that's my brother's, uh, my immediate younger brother's birthday. So that one I remember. But recently I remember that my mother introduced me to this thing called uh, like a scripture union gathering in Elisha, Osho State, Nigeria, I was less than 10 years old. So she introduced me there and she allowed me to be taking my younger ones while she goes to work. 
and I used to take them. That was where I first had my salvation experience. Mm. We we'll pray, we we'll do so many things, and uh, you know what? I I just wonder, wow, that must have been where I first of all encountered Jesus, mm. because I remember that I was even persecuted. Yes, as young as I was. But the one I actually remembered was that uh, September 5, 1988. So, do you want me to share how I got Yes, yes, okay. yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I remembered my mother sent my brother on an, uh, on an errand. Mm -hmm. So, to go and buy eggs. So, but he was gone for a long time. So, well, as a first child, my mother said, okay, go and look for him. So I went to look for him, only to find him, the egg on the, on the floor, hmm. he was busy playing soccer. Wow. <laughs> and it was his birthday, typical of him, <laughs> I'm telling you. He was playing soccer. So, and of course, when I saw him, I was, ah, ah, we've been waiting for egg. Where did you go to? Hmm. So, but there was a man there. I saw that, I was already, I saw him, I, I had, he was playing soccer. So, but that man, before I got there, he started talking to them. I didn't know that this man, what he does is, he will bring lots of uh, soccer ball, mm -hmm. and that will attract the boys. Mm -hmm. When they come, they will play, and then he will witness to them. Mm -hmm. That was when I gave my life to Jesus. Wow. Me, I was coming with all fury. I was furious. <laughs> but he just said, he, was, he begged me. He said, oh, please. And I said, and he started talking to me. Mm -hmm. I gave my life to Jesus. I don't even mm. know if those boys gave their life to Jesus. But me that went there that day, mm. that was my encounter. Wow. And I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Though I didn't know what it meant, mm. because eventually I remembered my uh, experience with mm. the Lord. Mm. So, but that day was my actual encounter with Jesus. And that was where the journey started. Wow. By God's grace. Wow. Yes. Wow. 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 Who could have thought that <laughs> such a situation like that I'm could have led that. to salvation of soul? Mm. I guess it's telling us that we should definitely use every opportunity to you. preach the gospel. Mm. We just might not know. Now we have a pastor missus here. <laughs> wow. Amen. So can you share with us how knowing Jesus and believing in Jesus has changed your story for good? How Jesus has turned your story around? Because many times people talk about, oh, give your life to Jesus. They just, they are not really transformed. They, they just felt, oh, I guess it's just the right thing to do. But how has knowing Jesus really transformed your life in totality for mm. good? Yes, there's no how you will give, actually give your life to Jesus, hmm. that there won't be any difference. Hmm. If there's no difference, you need to check. There must be a significant difference, I'm telling you. So the first thing that will flood your mind is this love. Hmm. It's like somebody has just proposed to you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like somebody just proposed to you, just found a new found love. I'm telling you. You want to be in the presence, in his presence at all times. It's as if, and you know, there is a kind of envelope that, the, 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 now that I know, it is the Holy Ghost that just envelope you, mm -hmm. like hugging you, cuddling you. There is no way you will have that experience. You know, or like these days, there are people who just stroll to the altar with their phone, type in. And they want to go out and answer the other call. No, no. You, there is, that day, I remember I was going home. I was sober, my God. Because that man just made me, there was this conviction that rested on me. Hmm. There is no way that the Holy Ghost will convince you of your sins. That you will not, you will not, first of all, what is now called the, the uh, uh, godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Not these days that people just match. Oh, you know, I'm just I'm giving my life to Jesus. Oh, I'm giving my life to Jesus. Oh, yeah. They they might even be making up why they are doing. No, there is this soberness. There is this conviction that the Holy Ghost will give unto you. There is no way that you will leave that altar without shedding tears of the love that God has given to you. My sister, as young as I was, 
I was sold out for Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. So Jesus changed my life. Even my mother knew that something changed mm. about this girl. Mm. You know, I, we were brought up Catholic. The, as a result, I thought now that I have given my life to Jesus, I have to be more dedicated to my Catholic way. And I tell you, I went after my rosary. Prayed the rosary very well. I was dedicated to praying to, uh, know what we were encouraged to pray 6 a.m., uh, 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 3 3 hours. So I was dedicated to it. I, I loved the Lord until the Lord now. Because, you know, when you are sincerely wrong, God can see that, oh, this is my daughter, I really want to serve me. She's sincerely wrong. He will find a way to get you out of it. Mm -hmm. So, by the mercy of the Lord, He changed me. The Lord helped me. If I do anything wrong like this, there is a nudging that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. That if, for example, if I steal, oh, I stole before. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I stole. If I stole anything, I don't care. Do I care? Even if they are looking for it, I will be able to see if I did it. I may even... Uh, put the blame on my brothers <laughs> but as from that time that God Jesus convicted me all those my mom mama's coca-cola mm. I stopped stealing it <laughs> <laughs> yes all those things going into the pot of soup to bring uh, meat mm. I stopped stealing it I stopped there was a drastic change there must be a drastic change a serious change oh yeah there must be a change if you truly you encounter Jesus. Yes, there must be a change. Wow, there must be a change. Yes. So if there is no change, then there's a need to go back to the mm -hmm. Calvary mm -hmm. and rededicate mm -hmm. one's life to Jesus mm -hmm. because there has to be some sort of transformation. The things that I used to do, I do them. I do them exactly. No more. Exactly. Wow, thank you so much, Ma, for sharing. Mm -hmm. Can you share an experience that you felt it was over until when Jesus stepped into the boat of the situation? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I have lots of them, I'm telling you. Um, I, I came from a polygamous family. And um, I saw my mother. Um, she had to take us to Jesus very early. Because it was, uh, if you have never experienced polygamy war, may you not, may you not experience it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a war that lives could be lost. And um, as young as I was, oh my goodness, I remember a time my parents fought. They were fighting seriously. I left school. I remember I was about 10 years old. I left school. Mommy said I should go to school. I didn't go to school. I put on my uniform. I took my bag. But they said for me to go to school, I went to, you know, this uh, calling phone to go and call one of my parents' um, uh, friend. I remember kneeling down on the phone. People were laughing at me. You know, you were kneeling down, pay phone. Kneel. <laughs> I was begging him, please, sir, I don't like how my parents are fighting. It's affecting me. I couldn't concentrate in school. It's affecting me. Please come out. Because I saw their family. We used to visit their family when our family was still together. We used to be, and I loved the way their family was. And the man was saying, okay, don't worry. I'll come and talk to your daddy and so on and so forth. I was lost, I'm telling you. Obviously, my parents did not know this was really affecting me. So now, after it, it continued, until my mother gave her life to Jesus. When she gave her life to Jesus, there was an experience. In our house, in, in our home, let me call it a home, um, one night like that, light, I mean, fire just started in our room, hmm. in our room alone. I remember two or three nights before, my father packed out, leaving only myself, my younger ones, and my mom turns there. Fire just started. I'm telling you, mysteriously. This fire started at 8 p.m. April 20, 1985. It started at 8 p.m. By 8.20, it stopped. It has consumed everything there by itself. 
it consumed everything, started and finished. Hmm. But one thing I remember that my mother was doing that night, she just kept, she was weeping, she was wailing, but she kept saying, thank you, Jesus. I had not given my life to Jesus then, but I, I started going to uh, fellowships that she took us to. That sh shocked me. Is she crazy? Is she, is she crazy? Why is she singing? When all are things, the only thing that came out of that fire, because I remember she was shouting, my certificate, because she was a nurse, a brilliant nurse. She was shouting, my certificate. My father went inside, brought out the certificate. By the side like this, it was burnt. But that was the only thing that came out. My two brothers that were sleeping on the other side, my father went inside and brought them out too. I saw the way my mother was calmed, how she was singing. She was weeping. She was a sorrowful, but she was still singing, praising Jesus. When all our school, it was a Sunday. Mm. You can check the date. Mm. April 20, April, yeah, April 20, 1985. I can't forget. Mm. That was, she was singing. All our cloth was burnt. Our school uniform, we just washed it, ironed it for the following day. Everything burnt. But I saw her that night. That's why we have to be very careful what we do before our children. I was, how old was I? I was very young. I was just 10 years old. I knew what, what happened. I saw my mother. I saw the faith. So wow. So this is it. But that changed something in me. That God does really exist. True. Yes. That was one main point. There are several others. But that brought me to a point in my life that I know God really, mm. it does exist, yes. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Definitely, there is God, because okay. how could it have been that even the certificate was oh, yeah. able to escape that I'm fire, I'm telling you. and no one was harmed? Mm. That can only be God, no that one. can only be God. No wow, God is so awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Ma, for You're sharing. Welcome. Another question is, um, Okay, so also, can you share a very disappointing situation, but you see how it eventually worked out for your good? Many times, you know, we might go through things that might be like, how can, I just can't say good in this. Mm. Um, that one has to do with waiting on the Lord. Um, I, I, I thought, okay, maybe, so, so, a, 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 a brother promised to marry me. He said, oh, you know, I'm going to a ministry. I knew that God has something in me that will help my husband. I knew that much I know. So when he came, you know, I'm going to the ministry. So I thought it was him. Let me be sincere with you. I did not pray about it. Hmm. I didn't. But because of what he said, hmm. I just assumed hmm. it's going to be. So that's why as... Maybe you are single, you are still <laughs> trusting God. Don't play games with God. Hmm. Pray. Let him lead you. Even if you feel what this person is saying is in agreement with what God has told you, still pray. I didn't pray. I was a child of God. Believer. I lead praise and worship almost every day. I was in dr to drama. I, I mean, I was serving the Lord. Yet, <laughs> I got misled. So I thought he would marry me. Though he told me that he has somebody, but that the person is not fit for him because he's going to the ministry and the lady is not really interested. So I fell for it. But God started nudging me. The Lord will not leave his own. No, he doesn't do that. God is a just and faithful God. So, one day, God kept nudging me. God sent my pastor to me. God sent my husband to me. He wasn't, <laughs> we were not even caught in all. I don't even know. He was the assistant pastor. God just sent him to me that I should be careful. My area pastor called me and said I should be careful. Wow. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I didn't listen. I did not listen at all. And that is it. If there is a breach of contract between man and God, search it 
to the side of man. God is faithful. True. God is faithful. So true. So, one day, I went to greet him at his base. I live in Port Harcourt. He lives in, uh, at um, Bonny. Bonny is an island, you know, surrounded by water. So I had to travel by boat. Mm -hmm. I have gone to visit him several times. I'm telling you. There was a day I went to visit him. The boat nearly hmm. overturned. And Port Harcourt is in Nigeria. In Nigeria, in yes, Port Harcourt in Nigeria, West Africa. The boat nearly overturned and I was praying, God, hey, my mother sent me to go to school. Oh, <laughs> she didn't know that I'm on the road on the on, on water. Oh God, please. If you if you save me, I won't go back. It's a lie. I still went back. I was lost then. I thought I was in love. Mm. It was lost. Serious one. My sister, one day I went to greet him. As we were in the room, we had a knock. Pum, pum, pum. Lo and behold. The lady that he said he has left still visit him. Okay. The lady was with traveling bag. Obviously, the lady had come to visit. <laughs> wow. When this woman saw me, she beat me up. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm laughing. <laughs> she beat me up. Wow. I still have uh, the, the something. To, mm. to, to show for it. Anytime I look at it at times, I just laugh. <laughs> it's part of my disobedience. The journey of my disobedience, I'm telling you. If God loves you and you are disobedient, he will find a way to bring you back. That, that broke me completely. She beat me up and she had this long nail. So she was just, just, she beat me up, oh. The man could not even, the man was saying, leave, I know you want to kill the girl. Oh, for where? She beat me very well. Hey, husband snatcher. Me, of course, I, could, I couldn't do anything. I, I was just at least covering my face so that she would not put mark on my face. Hmm. Eventually, the brother was able to, 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 to get me off her. I just took my bag. I picked race and ran. Ran to the to the uh, to the water side. Took another boat. I was just praying, Lord, take me home. I will never do this again. I went home, and that was the point at which I rededicated my life. Because as a result of my lust, I entered into so many things I was not supposed to enter into. You know, when you are walking the ways that God has not appointed for you, you may end up. You may end up in so many things that you are not supposed. You are not supposed to. I know of a truth that God loves me. Some people did not do the amount of what I did. They are lost today. That's why I'm telling you. It's just like Mary of Magdala. Mm. That's why that woman loved the Lord exceptionally. I cannot but love the Lord. There's nothing I cannot give to him. My children even knows. My husband knows. Because he really, he actually loved me. I'm telling you. That, was, that one, I thought it was over. But God said no. That's why God is a God of second chance, third chance, fourth chance at times. If you can run back to him, if you can just run back to him, he will give you that chance. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. 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 That is powerful. That is powerful. Yeah, definitely. It reminds me of the scripture that says, He that the Father loves, mm. he chastises. He chastises, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, because God has great plans for you. And he just needed to direct you back to his will. Exactly. There was a beating involved, even though it sounds funny, but I think the beating is definitely worth it compared to what would have been. What I'm telling you, hmm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I, I, I'm glad that she beat me. <laughs> <laughs> that brought me back to my senses. Oh yeah, I'm glad she beat me up. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> wow. So now leading to the question of, so how did you now meet? The one. Yeah. After that incident, I just threw myself back to the work of my God. Yeah, while I was lost in with that brother, I was still working, but I knew in my heart that I don't have any reward for it. Why? Because I I my 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 path was not straight. My hands were not clean. I knew. You know, at times we know. Oh yeah, but yet we still go for it. Hmm. 
God is a just God. We are spirits. We have a soul and we live in a body. So there's no way. Don't say, oh, I didn't know. No, there's a way God will be nudging you. You know. It's just that you just want to indulge in it. I've been there before. So I threw myself back into the work of my God. I rededicated my life. And um, one day, oh, God is good. Oh, Lord, God is good. I was just taking care of, I, I wanted to go to church. Um, meanwhile, so many things have happened, uh, which maybe sometime we'll talk about that. Uh, I lost the little job I was doing. I actually went to Port Harcourt to do my postgraduate diploma. I had to leave school because my um, lecturer said he wanted to sleep with me and I did not budge. So I finished first semester, but second semester I didn't make it. So I just let it go. Um, that's another testimony on so. Mm -hmm. So I went to look for a job. Um, during the course of this, my misbehavior, during the time I was coming back to God, I lost the job. So I was now employed at church to be the first secretary of our church when we had it. So and I was working very well. So one day I was about to go to church. Uh, in my room, I wanted to pick up my key like this, and I had the Lord. I've had God audibly, maybe three times in my life. Wow. This one is one of them. You know, when you hear God audibly, it could likely mean that that the path that you're about to take may be rough, but because you have had God, it's an assurance that He's with you. I had Him, and He said, "I will show you your husband today." Wow. I ignored it. I'm telling you, I did. So, meanwhile, before then, before this, when I was 16 years old, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw myself ministering in song. I ministered in word. But my main thing was my, I was a, uh, a help to somebody. And that man was holding my hand. There are so many other things there that maybe another time. Mm. That is now manifesting now when I was 16. But I didn't see the face of the man. So I thought it was another brother. When I went to tell that brother at that age of 16, he said, oh, I don't think it's me. I think you should wait. Years after, I had that same dream. But this time around, I saw my husband's face. Wow. When I saw my husband's face, I said, oh, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Number one, he is, he, he was the assistant pastor, and we knew him as a firm, disciplinary, worded, he doesn't take nonsense. All this, uh, if a youth is made, he will stand firm on the word of God. They don't actually, many people did not even like him because he was standing, I said, oh, it's not going to happen. He cannot marry me. I know Be because he travels a lot to uh, from he travels from Port Harcourt down to uh, Oyo State in Nigeria. So we thought that oh maybe he has somebody there. So forget about it. It's not going to happen. So when the Lord told me, I'm going to show you your husband. husband I said okay, we'll see now. As I was entering the church like this, we had two doors. I wanted to pass through it. He wanted, he was coming this way. And the Lord said, that's your husband. Yeah. I turned immediately. I said, eh, eh, it's not going to happen. I changed the course. <laughs> and of course, God did not say anything afterward. Mm. But I knew what I heard. So I started avoiding him. I began avoiding him. He lives on the path of uh, uh, the road where I lived. You know, at times I, I trekked home. I trek home if I don't have money. So, and it's a long journey, I'm telling you. He will say, oh, uh, sister, let me ask her, bro, it's okay. I, I will find my way. And I, will ju I just wanted to avoid him by all means. But eventually, the Lord dealt with me. I said, okay, Lord, I agree. But I want to leave out my fleas and see. I have two questions I asked the Lord. I visited... Um, the camp, Redemption Camp in Nigeria. You know, Redemption Camp full of people, a lot and lots of people. I was standing in the middle of nowhere. 
I said, if this man, in this multitude, we come and look at me. <laughs> that was a difficult test. You I'm <laughs> telling you, I was standing with a sister and I told her, I said, if this man is in this camp today, and if he can look at me here, that I'm sitting down like this waiting, then I will believe. I have not finished talking. Lo and behold, that, that sister tapped me. She could not even talk. She just did. <laughs> she was dazed. He looked up. Behold, the man was coming towards us. I froze. This man did not know the prayer we prayed. I prayed. He just came, oh, sister, oh, how are you? Oh, you came for Holy Ghost service. I said, yeah, yes. Oh, God bless you. I need to go and see somebody. And that was what he just left. I still said, oh, it was a coincidence. <laughs> I said, okay, God, I'm going back to Portacourt. I knew that following weekend, I won't be in Portacourt, but I knew that it was, a, it was women's week. And at times they give single sisters things. They just pick one single sister and give them things. As a point of contact to reach out to them, maybe you marry soon. I said, okay. This weekend they are going, this next weekend they're going to be holding something. I will be going by that same day. I won't be able to make it. Let it be me that they will, they will pick. Us, the following day, Sunday, I didn't go to church. I was tired. So I couldn't make it to church. My brother now came to greet me. So he came, ah, sister, welcome. God bless you. And so on, so I said, ah, yes, so thank you. She, he ate, as he was about to go back to his, uh, his, uh, his place, I knew he was carrying a gift bag. So I, he already went out, I saw him off. He just said, oh, ah, sister, look, oh, uh, the pastor wife, pastor's wife said I should give you this, that uh, you will understand when you open it. I said, what is it? So I took it, I opened it. It was a gift to me that I was the one that they picked. Oh, wow. I, I just lost it. I said, okay, <laughs> it is well. I did not know. Immediately, I picked my things. I went to the pastor's wife. I said, mommy, this is it. This is it. My experience, how the Lord said it, all the evidence, everything. I said, okay. She said, okay. You know what? You know, you cannot go and propose to him. Let's keep on praying. I said, okay, mommy. But make sure you don't give him any um ain't eh, that you are the one just so i said okay mama no problem and we kept praying until one day how long <sighs> it was more than a year wow mm. hmm. until one day in fact one of the chorus choristers told me that ah please sister can you i want you to pray that uh brother Folari will propose to me <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Pastor Falami Akishola is the husband, so that's why it's funny. I'm telling you. When the sister told me, I said, okay, no problem. We will pray. I was just thinking in my mind, ah, well, Lord. Did you pray? I did not pray. <laughs> I just said, Lord, let your will be done. Ah, why would I pray that kind of prayer? <laughs> when I knew what God has told me. I didn't pray. I just said, Lord, I, I prayed to now. Let your will be done. That's I'm right. telling you. Yes, yeah, so when she went, and I told the pastor's wife, until one day, a brother called me and told me that he has gone to the pastor. You know, when God is about to open a major door, the enemy will begin to open windows. And you might think That's it's the door. That's it. Mm -mm. You might think that's the door. A brother called me. He said, I think I need to marry you. And that please, I have gone to tell pastor. Because in the redeemed Christian church of God, the brother will go and tell the pastor. The pastor will call the sister and say, go and pray. I don't know if they tell them now who the brother is. But you will be told, go and pray. Who is the Lord leading you to? 
they won't mention the brother. So this brother now came and met me and said, I've gone to tell Pastor I want to marry you. So in case Pastor calls you, tell him that I'm the one. Oh yeah. So I said, ah, are we supposed to do that? Ah, he said, that's what people do these days. So, so he mentioned one or two people that did it among the youth. He said, ah, he said oh, sister, that's what happens these days. So. That's what you have to fight. I'm sure the reason why they do that is so that you can receive from the Lord, not to... Exactly. Marriage is, is from the Lord. You need to seek the owner of the marriage on how to go about it, I'm telling you. So when he told me, I was furious that night. I was angry. Actually, I was very angry. I got home. I said, Lord, hmm, this is getting out of hand. What kind of nonsense is this? And of course... Following day, Sunday, pastor called me. He said, a brother is interested in you and I wanted to go and pray immediately. I did not know where that, that godly anger came from. I said, pastor, if the brother that came to you is not for Larry Akishola, tell him I said no. My pastor was. What are you talking about? I said, sir, the Lord told me that pastor, I mean, yeah, we call him pastor because he's assistant pastor. That pastor for Larry Akishola is my husband. He just started laughing. He said, look, <laughs> he said, sir, hear me, please, please. I said, I'm very serious. I have spoken to mommy about it. He said, my wife, I said, yes. He said, when was this? I said, over a year ago. Are you serious? I said, yes. I said, I've been praying about it. I said, if this brother that came to meet you is not for Lana Kishola, tell them I said no. I said, okay, no problem. I will deliver your message. He prayed with me and I left. My sister, the following week, I, I was persecuted amongst the youth, mm. the executive. They say, who are you, by the way? A whole brother, because the, that man has uh, a... Uh, a um, is one of either the secretary or the treasurer, I can't remember. I, ah, he has money. Can't you see? You turn him down. Blah blah. It was a big fight. Oh. Even one of the pastors called me to his office and said, eh, that brother is for you. You turn him down. I said, Look, sir, God told me who I'm going to be. He said, Who is the person? I didn't talk. He said, I'm commanding you. I'm telling you, it was bad. That's why I said, if God opens a door for you, and you are yet to see it, check out those windows that are opened. They may not be from the Lord. Pray about it again. It means God is about to open your eyes to see that big door that can even fit both windows. So I made up my mind, I'm leaving Potter Court. Because the persecution was hot. It was only my pastor that was standing for me. So I told Pastor, I said, I'm leaving Port Harcourt. My husband was there that day. He said, ah, you suddenly, you are just leaving? Why? What is it? He was just talking. I'm just wondering what you'll be thinking in your mind. Like, brother, can't you say something? <laughs> I'm telling you. You are just leaving. But he was just talking. I said, I made up my mind. He said, what is it? Tell me. Is it about this job? He do this, this, is this, that. My husband was a rich man in Nigeria, I'm telling you. But I saw beyond that. I did not even see, I didn't even know that he was even that wealthy. That's the truth. I didn't know. Because he loved this uh, one rickety car that he was driving about. So nobody actually, but we knew he was working with this oil company. He was the CFO. He was the chief um, financial officer. He was, we knew that. But, of course, when the girls are talking, I just walk away. So, I made up my mind, I, was, I will leave. So, eventually, one of my sisters made me to stay, cross over to January, and I said, you know, I'm getting married, I would like you to sing there. So, I said, okay, I will, I will wait until that January. I celebrated my, my, my birthday. I, that day, I was wearing white. I rolled on the floor. You know, the floor was very dusty. Because I told the Lord, Lord, before I leave Port Harcourt, answer my prayers. 
So the following week, pastor called me and said, Brother Folari, we call you. Just, I just want to let you know. Wow. That Sunday, he said, please, can you see me in my office tomorrow? I said, okay. I was not even paying attention. I thought maybe he got a job for me. He wants me to do something. Mm. I was not thinking about it again because I didn't give up. I just, just kind of because I want it. to leave. I was persecuted enough mm. that day. As I sat down in his, as I was signing it, because the place is well guarded, as I was signing it, I saw that my pastor, his name was about two places before mine. What is pastor doing here? Well, I signed my name. I went inside. There's nothing for me to hide. It was well, then I knew that he had already called pastor. It was later he told me that that was what he called pastor to tell him that he was going to propose to me. And pastor said, look, the girl has been waiting. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't want to be in between. Just go ahead. So I got to his office that day. You know, he was just asking, how are you? How is mommy, your parent, and so on and so forth. And so on. And he just said it. Will you marry me? Oh. Just like that. After, he didn't beat about the bush. <laughs> I mean, so I didn't beat about the bush. I just said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it to beat about the bush? I mean that you're waiting to be waiting for how long? My, my sister Jare, which can't beat about the bush. <laughs> when the Lord had already spoken, I, I said, yes. Oh my goodness, I have never seen him so happy. He just started singing. Mm -hmm. I just did, did like this, and I was just looking at him. Right there and there, he held my hand, we prayed, and he said, okay, um, um, that he's not ready to wait. He wasn't young. As you are looking at him, he's about almost nine years older than me. So he, he wasn't a young man. So he said, don't worry. I will take care of everything. And um, he said, for now, it's between you, myself, pastor, and his wife. <laughs> OK, no problem. I'm telling you, it was like a dream. The Bible uh -huh. says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of them, right? they are just like a dream. Amen. All those waiting, it would look like I'm telling you, within three months, we were married. Wow. Hmm. I'm telling you. So after you have waited, I'm telling once you. it is done, there's I'm no more waiting. Waiting for what? When you begin to wait, you are looking for trouble. <laughs> I'm telling you, I woke up, the, I couldn't sleep that night. Hmm. I was just rolling, Lord, so this is how you do. Hey, Lord, so this is how you do. <laughs> Father, this is how you do. <laughs> hey, God, you are so good. Oh. Ah, Lord. My sister, within three months, wow. we were married. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. Praise the that Lord. That was how God did it. So many people were surprised. So many people. So many people. There were sisters that were yearning for his attention. There were sisters that were asking. They were practically asking him, marry me. Okay. <laughs> but God had, had his way. And that was it. Wow. Wow, wow. I don't know about you, but that is so encouraging and inspiring. And one thing I can just pick up from that, there's so many lessons, but one key lesson is that it's pays to wait on the Lord. Because I'm just imagining that one year, you already know that this is the man, and the man is just doing his own thing, and persecutions, and all sort of things. But I believe also through that process, it was also a training process as oh, well. Yes. A time of waiting is a training process. Mm -hmm. God is making you to pass through some things. It's, the thing is that, like I tell people, your time of waiting, whatsoever God wants you to learn, make sure that you learn it. Easy? Mm -mm. The God of waiting will see you through. Amen. And we see you too in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ma, for sharing yeah. that. That's what is blessing me already. And I'm sure it will bless so many people Amen. to just wait on the Lord. And do not take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. When it comes to marriage or whatever it is, it pays to wait on the Lord. And one key thing that you mentioned is that when God has an open door, there will be many other windows oh, that yeah. might look attractive, but 
check check it very well with the Lord mm -hmm. and don't fall for counterfeit. Amen. 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 So next question. Um, can you please share a testimony of how God healed you in the past? How God suspend natural occurrence for you? And I don't want to give the hint, but I'm thinking of the testimony of Jesuni. Ah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes, so oh, mm. that boy is a testimony. Actually, all my children are, I'm telling you. Actually, every child of God is. Mm. But his own is just spectacular, I'm telling you. All of them, I can share one, one, one testimony, I'm telling you. Is it my first child? Please share. <laughs> She, they, they've already given up on her. Mm. Ah, I don't want to cry. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to cry. Mm. I'm telling you, it was difficult. They, 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 they gave up on her just like that. I had to withdraw her from school. I had to homeschool my daughter and myself. Because at grade three, she couldn't read, she couldn't write. Meanwhile, I know that by the time you are getting to grade one, you should be able to read. But she couldn't. And they were making jest of her. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. She was losing her self-worth. Unfortunately, even in the church, it happened, yeah. That was the last thing that broke me. Because at church, somebody spoke to her and said, eh, hey, your daughter of the accountant, you cannot even read, you cannot even write. To the extent she was getting afraid of going to children's church, you just see her, just like this. Ah, what is all this? Mm. I told my husband, I said, Olumi, I want to withdraw this child. I'm going to teach her to read and write by myself. Ah. We went on the net, we checked homeschooling. We read. I said, don't worry, just give me, go ahead, I'll do it. Abi, I studied mechanical engineering. I have never used it to work, as I'm telling you. My mechanical engineering, I use, I use it on my children. Yes, yeah, so, and I have no regrets whatsoever. I have no regrets. I knew the future for us. I knew we are going into something bigger. If the lives of the children are not worth living, you have lost your ministry. So. I said, I need, I, we need to withdraw this child. <laughs> the day I went to tell them at school, the principal was talking, ah, no, you cannot do it. I said, yes, I can. I can do it. I have my papers. I will, I will apply and I, I will be given the grant. Ah, the woman said, you cannot make it. They were making it difficult for me. The homeschooling people had to come into it. They helped. They gave us a lawyer in case they want to uh, make it things difficult for us. Oh yeah, it was it was a lot of. Uh, I remember even you know I'm a pastor and I know what I'm talking about. Even in the church, you know, when you don't understand some people, when you don't understand people, don't judge them. Seek to understand. Seek to learn. Why are you doing what you are doing? Okay. Instead of judging them, I remember somebody saying that. Ah, how can you withdraw a child? What is it? What is all going on? What is going on? We can just with you are like that. Ah, what is all this? I said, look, it's my child. You don't know why I would draw? Did you ask me? You didn't. You people, I mean, you can see that she cannot read and write. She needs one, one to one. My sister, for two years, I was homeschooling my daughter. And by the mercy of God, by the time she went back, by the time I, I was through with that, by the mercy of God, they had already built another school in our community. So she didn't have to go back to the other school where they were making jest of her. That was what God did. Covered. Uh, God knows how to cover shame. The Lord will cover your shame. Amen. He will turn it to glory in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And my daughter went back. She still had her struggles. Even as at the time that she even went to high school, they were saying, oh no, she cannot make it. She can't go to the university for where? My daughter went to the university. <laughs> she went to the, she said, graduate today. Praise God. 
She is a graduate today by the mercy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not by one thing that we did, mm -hmm. but by the mercy of God. He gave us the enablement to do it. Mm -hmm. Is it? No, but God sustained us. Is it the, our second daughter? Uh, God did not allow her to die in my womb. God brought her out safely. Mm. God helped her. And then, Jesuni, oh my goodness. I went for the scan, the pre something. Yeah, yeah yes. ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound. And of course, I've been, not, it's not today I've been going for scan. So I even thought that they were calling me for, because I'm zero negative. I thought they were calling me for the, the average. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. I got there that day. I went with uh, with his sister Ruth, and um, the doctor just gave me a paper. I look at it. I did not understand what they were talking. I said, "What is it? Tell me." He said that um, the baby has some um, abnormalities. Um, she may be down. She may be born Down syndrome. That they that they want to send me to uh, North York. Mm. So they gave me a letter to North York. I, from that hospital, RVH, till I got to, from his office, I meant, till I got home, I was weeping. I was crying. I got home, I called my husband, he was at work. He said, don't worry, don't worry. Were they there when the child was, uh, was kept there? Don't worry. It's okay. I by the letter, I said, don't worry, when I get home. The day of the, I drove myself to North York. He has already gone to work. He took a bus to work. So I got there. You know, the woman said, they have to uh, extract some water from it. Uh, the chances that the pregnancy can come down. They need to check the... I'm not sick for it. Thank you, my sister. They need to do this. And then, you know, if we find out that uh, there is something, we want to encourage you if you can just terminate it because, you know, the government is trying to... She told me. The, try, the government is trying to, you know... Um, uh, because they reduce the exactly health. because of okay. um, the children that they are taking care of and so on and so forth. I called my husband again. He said, just go home. Were they there when God puts the baby there? Go home, my friend. I said, okay. So I told them, my husband said I should go home. So okay. They asked me to sign something and I left. I took out the letters and I went home. I cried my eyes out. I At the same time, I tried to praise God. I was playing um, some music, I got home. I, I drove home that day, I did not even know, but I got home. And of course, my husband came, laid his hand on me, prayed for me, and meanwhile, let me tell you, when I got pregnant with that boy, I didn't know. I'd lost, I'd had a miscarriage before then. So when I got pregnant, I didn't know, but I was very sick. So they, she, he took me to the hospital. I was having excruciating pain. So they did blood tests, your urine test. They said I wasn't pregnant. But my husband kept saying, you are pregnant. That the Lord told him that I was pregnant. Because they said, they don't know what is going on in me. They want to pass me through CAT scan. If I'm pregnant, it could affect the baby. The baby. So, but when they... Check everywhere. They no, they couldn't anything. find anything. They said, okay, they will pass me through. But they wanted to insert some... Um, like a contrast. A vein and some water on me because they say they want to put on one pink something. Like that, a contrast. Uh, exactly. They look for my vein. They looked everywhere. They looked here. They looked even underneath my leg. They could not find any vein. Everything collapsed that night. I didn't know that God was saving me. Maybe if they, had already, they were able to insert that pink something, it would have affected the baby. But I still went under the CAT scan. But my husband told me, look, we are pregnant. So that was how Jesuni was formed in me. It was, I think, a month after that I knew I was pregnant. So now, forward back to now the news. The doctor was now saying maybe the CAT scan situation was what affected him and so on. Do we have any uh, family um, history? history of, okay. I said no, including my husband, including me, no, nothing. I said, okay, this is what we saw. They did it again, they still, it was still the same thing. Ah, okay, no problem. So, okay, you said you want to have the baby? I said, yes. 
But you know, Satan will just be playing with my mind. At times, I will not be able to sleep. If I close my eyes like this, it is this kind of thing I will be saying. Well, as God, we have it. The day of delivery, there were eight, eight um, um, Specialist. specialists in the theater that day because I had all of them through Susanna section. So it was true, um, eight of them. And you know, they came and met me where I was. <laughs> I said, you know, when this baby comes out, we, we may not see him. Do you know the sex? I said, no. We have to take the child. Uh, we may have to examine uh, the child. You know, we'll not be able to give her to, or the baby to you. My sister, when this child came out, <laughs> he was shouting hallelujah. <laughs> he was screaming on top of his voice. When the doctor saw you, say, the first thing he noticed, he said, wow, look at the dimples. Mm. It was so deep. The boy was just, his hand up like this, yeah. I made it. I'm telling you, he said, <laughs> what, I'm here. <laughs> I am here. I'm telling you. I was, the, the, those people gathered around him. I, I couldn't see them, but my husband was telling me. You know, my husband was sitting beside me. You, of course, that's what he does every time. He was praying. I knew God had told him something. He put me, my mind at rest every time. Don't worry, God is in control. But you know, at times, uh, human flesh, women, exactly, Emotions. my sister. But that's one of the things that taught me that God is a good God. Amen. You know, I had the doctor. He said, please wrap him and give him to his father. Yeah. And that was it. Mm. And I said, it's about time. Give me my son. <laughs> give me my son. And they just handed the boy to him. They just came and met me and said, oh, we're sorry. Um, well, it was because of what we, we saw. They saw and it. it I'm, was God I'm that... telling you, they actually saw it. But the unchanging changer, the door that de deals with impossibilities, That's he right. did it, he changed it, he turned it. Mm -hmm. Ah, he will do the same for you Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. That was what he did. Yes, he did. It's and painful. you know what? Right from that time that they gave me that report, I started calling him Jesuni. Mm. Jesuni means it is Jesus. Jesus. When people will ask me Jesuni, what I say, just Jesuni, mm. just Jesuni, because. It is Jesus that we really do this. It is Jesus that we really do this. That's it is Jesus. Right. Yes. 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 And Jesus actually did it. Amen. And that was how it is. And our last child too. I was bleeding during her pregnancy. Hmm. They even thought maybe I had lost the child. I was bleeding for close to the fourth month. So I went for a scan. They still saw it there. So the doctor said maybe I had a twin. That one came out. They had different kinds of, because I was bleeding. And um, right from when she was in the womb, her father knew that she's going to be glory. So mm. that was how all of them, they are just, that's why I call them my destiny fulfillers. Yes. Because they have come to this world to fulfill destiny. Amen. And Hallelujah. destiny would they fulfill. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow, Hallelujah. wow. <laughs> I don't know about you, but God is real and God is still in the business of doing miracles. Amen. Or if only you will believe. Mm. What is that situation that you think, ah, maybe it's already over? Mm. Yes, doctors are good though. I'm also in the healthcare field. But there is a God in heaven that does miracles. Hallelujah. Just hold on to his word mm. and he will surely glorify itself through you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma, for that miraculous testimonies <laughs> they're all miracles indeed amen. Amen. amen amen so that led me to that question of someone that is doubting you know maybe they're going through very hard times right now and they're like is god real like i don't even know why you should still be doubting with that testimony but anyways but let's say someone is still feeling discouraged and feeling you know down and they're just feeling is there still god is still god mm -hmm. is god alive what would you tell them uh god is all god is alive he is i don't know the reports that um you got like i got that report but the bible says who shall believe a report so i'm asking you today whose report will you believe from my experience i found out that the energy we 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 use in 
doubting is far, far greater than the energy that you use to trust, to trust God. When you are, when you are uh, uh, afraid, when you are agitated, oh, 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 so many things can go wrong. Blood pressure. You may start to have so many things. The enemy may start to introduce so many things into you. Yes. But when you are trusting God, you have this peace that passes all this. I am telling you, during the time of Jesus, I will sit down like this at night. I will look at my husband. My husband is just sleeping away. <laughs> he has his peace. He's contented. His courage encourages me. Because he said, look, I cannot do it. I can't do anything that to encourage you. But I know that God will do it. He said, look, we have started calling this, this child Jesuni. Because we said either it's a girl or a boy, this child is Jesuni. We started calling the child him Jesuni right from the womb. So I don't know the situation you find yourself. <laughs> God is a miracle worker. He does miracle. He works miracle. You hear what I said? He does miracle. He, he, he works miracles. Not only will he do it, he will work it. He will make sure that as he's planning, he's making the plans to do it, he's working his purpose towards it. He's, he's asking you to wait, wait a little bit. Don't worry, he has not given up on you. You don't give up on God. He is real, he is good, he is mighty, he is God. All by himself, he stands on his class of his own. So that all glory can be his alone. Look at my testimony today. It is because of him. So that all glory can be his. Oh, I cannot wait any longer. You can still wait. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace is actually sufficient for you. So I can tell you emphatically, boldly, courageously, that what God exists. Amen. He is good. He is mighty. And he can answer you. And he will answer you. He can change your story if you just give him chance to do it. Don't go for the counterfeit like I wanted to go for it. Not so many people have that second or third chance. That's why I will never take that for granted. Don't go for the counterfeit. Don't listen to that person telling you, oh, you know, just let's arrange somebody for you. No, wait a little bit longer. A little bit longer. That man will come. If it will take God for him, if his visa is the person is waiting for, may he receive that visa right now so that you begin to have, uh, you have your husband. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God is a miracle doer. He's a miracle worker. He does it, he works it. As he's doing it, so he's working it. So wait a little bit longer for him. He will do it for you. Oh yes, he will do it. I don't know the report you have received. Today, believe the report of the Lord more than that. Cancerous? Oh, he healed it before. He can do it again. Waiting on God for children? Ah, 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 ah. He did it before. He can do it again. In fact, he will do it again. It's not a secret what he does. What he did for others, he can also do it for you. Oh, you know, they, they said the tube is this. The tube is that. Ah, ah, tube. Are you talking of tube? Don't you have a womb? Don't worry. The seed that, we, that, that, that will be fertilized will work there. Forget tube. The unchanging changer will change that tube. Hallelujah. And you will carry your child in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are waiting on husband, wife. Oh, by the mercy of the Lord, the Lord will connect you very soon. But make sure you are holding on to God. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. It pays to hold on to him. Why he's doing what he's doing, by and by, you will understand. Hmm. Wow, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. It will yeah. all make sense afterwards. After. Just hold on to God. God yeah. is so faithful. Yes, he He's so faithful. Thank you so much, Ma. Wow. We have been hearing, Jesus is coming soon. Mm. Jesus is coming soon. Oh, yes. Please talk to that, Ma. Mm. He's coming now. <laughs> I remember that, like my, my salvation experience. In those days, when you hear SU, Scriptures Union in Nigeria, I don't know if it's here in the Western world, but I, it's, I think they are very well established in, in Africa, Nigeria. And um, you know, what they tell us almost every time, 
is Jesus is coming. In fact, we were almost greeting ourselves. Hey, sister, Jesus is coming. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a wonderful time. You are anticipating. And do you know what? There is a crown for those that are anticipating the coming. Mm. You are waiting eagerly. There is a crown for it. So if you have not been waiting eagerly, you better start waiting so that you can receive that crown. He said he will come. Oh yeah, he is coming. I have, since I gave my life to Jesus, I've been hearing it for the past 30 years that he will come, he will come, he will come. He will come. And you know, the reason why he has not come is because he's given us a long road. He's given some people time to repent. Some people time to change. Some people time to say, okay, God, I'm sorry, once again. Recently, I had a, 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 a vision. I was not sleeping, and it looked as if I was sleeping. Because I was talking to my husband, but that vision was continuing. I saw the Lord. It was as if I was dressed, I was representing the Lord. Because from my head to my toes, white. Even my head was white. And I, that made me remember Revelation, where the Bible said that the head of Jesus, when John the Beloved saw the revelation of Jesus, he saw that his head was like a wool. He said it. Mm -hmm. So, and I saw Africa and America match together, representing the church. Jesus passed from that place, even to the other place. They could not, they did not even recognize him. They did not pay attention to him. And he kept saying, I am here. I am here. I am here. I'm coming very soon. No attention was paid for him. And you know what? When I came out of that vision, I began to think, if Jesus had come that night, I'm not even sure how I will make it. What was in my mind? Did I pray to God that night and say, Lord, the sin of that day, please forgive me because I make sure that I do that before I sleep. Father, in any way I've sinned against you today, in case you come, please count me worthy to be able to go with you. Jesus will come on. Oh, my sister. His coming is imminent. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. It's nearer than when we first believed. Look around us. All the things that are happening, that Jesus said will happen before his coming, it's happening. And you know what? Oh, 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 my Savior. Jesus is going by himself now, doing evangelism. I'm telling you, he's going by himself. He's entering into some places that humans are not allowing people to enter. Like the Arab countries, like all these places that are, uh, Christianity is prohibited. Jesus is going in there, telling people, witnessing by himself. Because Jesus said that if people, everybody will hear about him before he comes. So that he can declare that he's a just God. Because somebody can say, oh Jesus, I didn't hear about you. So that's why I didn't give my life to you. So that he can be, he can, he can be just. My sister, I have had testimonies of Muslims. Hindu people that are believe in this Hindu and uh, 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 Buddhist, Buddhi exa Buddhist. Mm -hmm. my sister, how Jesus appeared to them. Ha. Hey, so that stone will not replace us. Believers, daughter of Zion, son of God, child of God. <laughs> so that stone will not replace you. We need to go out there for evangelism. Jesus is coming. He is going out by himself now, appearing to people. A sister shared, a Muslim sister shared, how Jesus appeared to her. This sister could not read anything. Jesus taught her English. She, it was, she was speaking English when she was sharing the testimony at the camp. She said, this English I'm speaking, Jesus taught me. And he still said that I should go and learn more. But Jesus taught him, taught her the basics. He said the people, the, he, he said he was yelling when he saw the light. People came in and said, are, are you crazy? What are you yelling for? He said, can't you see him? It was only, she was only the only person that was seeing Jesus. Jesus is coming, sister. He's coming. He's going out, choosing his, his, his people. The remaining people is going out. That's why I'm telling you, sister and brother, hold fast to your faith. <laughs> Hold fast. Don't let it drop. The Bible said that we should, we should guard our salvation with fear and with trembling. Why fear? Why trembling? Because you could lose it. There are people that have lost their salvation. 
Don't be among the statistics. Guard it jealously. Guard it seriously. Yes, sister. Jesus is coming. I saw him. It was this week. Was it this week? This or last, last week. week? I shared it on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He said, "We are not paying attention to him again. We are not paying attention to evangelism. We are not paying attention to souls. We are not paying attention to once saved, forever saved. Paying attention to prosperity. Look, without you, do, do, say, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew six thirty three, mm -hmm. and his righteousness." And all these things, prosperity, children, money, and so on, will be added to it. But the number one thing is seeking first the kingdom of God. Have you sought the kingdom of God? You have not sought the kingdom of God. You now want, you do, what people are doing now is, all this shall be added, then I will now see the kingdom of God. It ain't going to happen like the Americans will say. No. We need to seek the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming. Uh, is it's so imminent? Although he do, he himself does not know when he will come. The Father only knows, but he's coming very soon. I'm telling you, look around us. So many things are happening. So many things are happening. He's calling a lot of people. He's calling a lot of people to to go because the the the, the, the field is white. Mm -hmm. Laborers are very few. Yeah, Jesus is coming. In fact, that one is for sure. Mm -hmm. He's coming. I saw him just this last week. He told me that his coming is very imminent. Wow. Yes. So, Ma, please, for those that have not yet given their life to Jesus, please lead them into the prayer of salvation. Hallelujah. 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 A saint is a sinner saved by grace. And you can be one today. Like when I was sharing my testimony, I told you, even though I gave my life to Jesus very early, because of pressure, I, I sinned. And I'm not talking of small sin, no. big one. The only thing I didn't do was to commit abortion because I didn't get pregnant. Assuming I had gotten pregnant as a result of my escapades, what would have happened? I was in Christ. But because of pressure, I went into little, little sins. In fact, they are not little. They are big sins. Because there's no little thing. There's no little before the Lord. Sin is sin, either big or small. You are, either you are a child of God or not. But you feel, and you know, I'm not sure God we we hear my prayers. Uh, no. <laughs> Come to him. There is no sin too small or too big that God cannot forgive. Come to him. You, but you need to you don't, you don't, you need to come to him in, in, in repentant hearts with your heart heavy and say, Lord, ah, I did it. I'm sorry. Ah, I did it. Oh, Paul said, I'm a I'm, sinners. I'm a chief among sinners. Yes. You have to be sorrowful. Not the one that we do these days. Oh yeah. You just, did. no, you have to come to him. I said, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Tell him what they are. I have to confess to him. And you know what? <laughs> I confess to my pastor too. It was shameful, but I had to do it. It was part of my restitution. It was part of my restitution. I told my husband too. I told him before, after I have told him that I will marry him, I told him all my escapades. He forgave me. And today here, yeah, God can rewrite your story if you can just give your life to Jesus. You are asking, how will I do it? Ah, just say this word after me. Just say this word after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come before you asking for forgiveness of my sins. Lord, tell him what you have done wrong. Tell him all your sins. Tell him. Go ahead, tell him. Oh, yes, he knows, but he wants you to tell him. If you need to cry, you better cry. If you need to weep, weep. Because it is, I mean, there must be a godly, I mean, a, a godly sorrow. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me, daddy. Forgive me, Lord. Tell him, Lord, I believe that you came to this world to die for my sin. I believe that you rose again and you went to heaven for my justification. 
I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now that you have given your life to Jesus, can you feel that joy coming from... I cannot explain it, but you will feel this joy even with tears. Even me, I tear up a little bit. Yes. Yes. And now, you can write this date down. This date that you confess it. Confess him. Write it down. And you know what? Your life will never remain the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Thank you so much, ma. More grace, more Amen. anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been so blessed and I just can't wait for many other people to be blessed by this. Amen. So do good by sharing this video. Amen. Share, subscribe, for there will be more and more testimonies that will encourage you as well and Amen. help you to navigate through the issues of life. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And thank you so much, Ma, again, you, Ma. for being thank part you, of True Life Story and for launching this. Thank you for Thank you me. so much, thank Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ma. Amen. So this will be the end of today's series of True Life Story, where everyone has a story. And I'm sure that you have been blessed by this story. God bless you. Comment down below like share and god bless you until next time bye thank you for tuning in to today's episode of true life story i believe you were blessed everybody has a story and stay tuned for next episode if you have a story that you would like to share send an email to issues of life 2020 at gmail.com issues of life 2020 at gmail.com do not forget to share, like, and subscribe. God bless you. Thanks again.